Former NBA basketball player Jason Williams had an unconventional childhood full of many heartbreaking experiences. But just like his father told him, he knew if he worked hard, he could achieve anything he wanted in life. He did just that, going from riding the bench for two years to finally being recognized as an all-star. Sadly, his life would turn upside down after he found himself at the center of an incident involving a gun, a death, and a multi-year prison sentence. Jason was born and raised in the Lower East Side projects of Manhattan, New York, to a white Polish and Italian mother and a black African-American father. He's the only child of both of his parents, who also had other children from previous relationships. When Jason was still a small child, the family picked up and moved down to South Carolina for a few years. He told Vlad TV in 2019 that he was a major target, being the product of an interracial union. He didn't get much love from his extended family, never had many friends, and got the crap beat out of him at school every day. Another painful incident that he doesn't speak about very often is being sexually violated by his uncle at the age of seven. When Jason was in his early teens, his oldest sister Linda was brutally attacked in their home. She was stabbed over a dozen times and beaten over her face with a hammer by a neighborhood junkie. Later, she would end up contracting the AIDS virus through a blood transfusion stemming from the assault. To cope with the traumatic event, Linda began using drugs, heroin to be exact. Her and Jason's other sister, Laura, while trying to help Linda get back on her feet after the attack, also developed a substance abuse problem, and the two of them would begin sharing needles. Eventually, Laura too contracted AIDS. Within five years, both of Jason's sisters would pass away, each leaving a child behind. At the tender age of 18, he took both of them in, raising them as his own while attending St. John's University in New York. More tragedy struck the family sometime later when another sister was shot and killed by her husband, who came home from work drunk and in a bad mood. He then turned the gun on himself. Amazingly, Jason was still able to graduate on time and then get drafted into the NBA. He was selected by the Phoenix Suns in the first round with the 21st pick of the 1990 NBA draft. His draft rights were then dealt by the Suns to the Philadelphia 76ers. He spent two years with the 76ers, but all he did was ride the bench. Not surprisingly, next came a trade to the New Jersey Nets in late 92. That same year, Jason started getting into major trouble. First, he was accused of breaking a beer mug over a patron's head at a bar in Chicago. The man pulled a knife on his teammate, Charles Barkley, so Jason sprang into action in self-defense. Two years after that, he was caught firing a semi-automatic weapon into some old tires in the parking lot at his job, the Meadowlands Sports Complex in New Jersey. When Vlad asked him why he would do something like that, Jason chalked up his behavior to having low self-esteem and wanting to gain the approval of the bad influences he was hanging around. He was never criminally charged in either case. While with the Nets, he only earned 12 starts in his first three seasons with the team, before finally earning a full-time starting position in the 96-97 season. Also in 1996, Jason proposed during halftime at a Nets game to his girlfriend, model and future Real Housewives of Atlanta star, Cynthia Bailey. They would, however, never make it down the aisle and eventually part ways. The following season would be Jason's breakout year. He led the league in offensive rebounds and offensive rebound percentage, while also finishing the season in the top five in total rebounds, rebounds per game, total rebound percentage, and offensive rating. He also received his first and only All-Star Game selection, playing in the 1998 NBA All-Star Game. On and off the court, he was also known for his fun-loving and contagious sense of humor that earned him the nickname, the Robin Williams of the NBA. As Jason was building up to becoming a major player in the league, the money started rolling in. He secured a six-year, $90 million contract. Then everything fell apart. In April 1999, Jason broke his right leg in a collision with a teammate while going for an offensive rebound in a game against the Atlanta Hawks. He would undergo career-ending surgery, in which a plate and five screws were inserted into his leg. Jason's personal life, though, seemed to take a turn for the better when he married model Kelly Batiste in December 1999. The union wouldn't last long as they divorced less than a year later. 
After sitting out the entire 1999-2000 season, Jason officially announced his retirement in June 2000, at the age of 32, after nine seasons. On the plus side, courtesy of insurance, he was still able to cash in his entire $90 million contract. Love came knocking on Jason's door once more that same year, when he married Tanya Young. Jason would fare better with this marriage than his first, but the relationship would still end in divorce. Tanya would go on to join the cast of VH1's reality TV show, Basketball Wives LA. She spoke candidly on the show about the domestic violence experiences she endured while married to Jason. She claimed that she had to sleep with a knife under her bed because when Jason drank too much or took substances, it would turn him into a different person. After going through a period of feeling sorry for himself over the way his career ended, which also included consuming a lot of pain pills and alcohol, Jason got out of bed and decided to participate in life again by securing a job with NBC to do pre- and post-game commentary for the NBA. In 2001, Jason authored a book about basketball titled Loose Balls. The book, largely intended to be a humorous recollection of his life in the NBA, was later cited as containing many separate anecdotes involving his tendency to play with guns. Another similar story that would end tragically for one man would take place the very next year and change Jason's life forever. On February 14, 2002, a 55-year-old limousine driver by the name of Costas Gus Christoffi was shot and killed at Jason's estate in New Jersey. Gus had been hired to drive Jason's NBA charity team from an event in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania to his home after they expressed interest in seeing the mansion. According to Jason, as he was giving everyone a tour, they ended up in his bedroom at one point and it was there where he began to show off his pistol and shotgun collections. As he flicked one of the 12 gauge shotguns closed, the same one that he had used earlier in the day with his skeet machine and still had a bullet left in it, went off, hitting Gus in the chest, killing him instantly. According to witnesses, Jason immediately went into panic mode, trying to cover up the crime by wiping his fingerprints off the gun, placing it in Gus's hand to make it look like he shot himself, hiding his bloody clothes, and jumping into the pool to wash off any blood on his body. When police arrived, they weren't buying the story Jason was trying to sell them, and he was arrested. He was released on bond shortly after. Two years later, he was acquitted of the more serious charge of aggravated manslaughter, but the jury came back deadlocked on the charge of reckless manslaughter. He was convicted on four counts for the cover-up. Life went on normally enough for Jason to briefly come out of retirement in 2005, to play for the Idaho Stampede of the Minor League Continental Basketball Association. He would still be expected to answer for the 2002 shooting though after another two years passed when he was brought before an appeals court. They ruled that he could be retried on the charge of reckless manslaughter. As he was dealing with a looming trial hanging over his head, Jason's spirits hit an all-time low point in April 2009. While in a New York City hotel, police were called after receiving a report that he'd become suicidal and violent. Jason describes the incident a little differently. He claims that he had been drinking heavily that day and asked someone for a sleeping pill. He was given a Xanax instead. While on the phone in his hotel room, he said he told the person on the other end that he was taking shots at the bar, which they misinterpreted as him saying shots fired. Police broke down his hotel door and tased the buck-naked former NBA star. Jason got himself in more trouble the next month for allegedly punching a man in the face at a bar in Raleigh, North Carolina. Apparently, he was surrounded by several men who accused him of bumping one member of their group and causing him to spill a drink. Even after Jason apologized, the men still wouldn't let it go. He was charged with simple assault, but the charges were later dropped. In January 2010, eight years after the shooting death of the limo driver, Jason pled guilty to a lesser, aggravated assault count. The following month, he was finally sentenced to five years in prison, with the possibility of parole after 18 months. Jason was also charged with driving while intoxicated after an early morning accident in Lower Manhattan that happened just one week before his plea deal. He crashed his car into a tree with a reported blood alcohol level more than twice the legal limit. That summer, he was sentenced to an additional year in prison to be added on to the five-year sentence. He also received a fine of a little over $16,000 for the damage to the tree. 
He was subsequently moved to famed Rikers Island to serve the DWI sentence after his 18-month bid for the shooting was completed. He only served eight months and was released from custody in April 2012. As much as Jason was looking forward to reclaiming his life outside of prison, acquiring certain things would prove to be far more difficult than he thought. He told Vlad that it was an uphill battle to even secure a home. His mega mansion in Jersey had been sold, so he was in the market for something else. However, all the HOAs he was coming up against continually denied him residence due to his felony record. While behind bars, Jason wrote, a lot. His second book, an autobiography titled Humbled, Letters from Prison, was published just a few months after his release. A third book, Crashing, a memoir, would come in 2018. Since Jason didn't have access to the vices that he was previously addicted to while serving time, he came out clean and sober. That run didn't last long though, as he explained in an interview with radio station Hot 97. He became hooked on substances once again after experiencing the pain of people turning their backs on him. After a few years of another downward spiral, several of his tried and true friends came together to stage an intervention and encouraged Jason to seek treatment. It did the trick, but the overall experience left much to be desired. The wheels in Jason's head started to turn. He came up with a bunch of ideas about helping addicts that turned into his own treatment program called the Rebound Institute at the Florida-based facility Futures. These days, much of Jason's time is taken up working in the experimental and adventure-based addiction treatment program. He's put his heart and soul into helping as many people as he can, from regular folk like teachers and doctors to former NBA players like Delonte West kick their habits for good, and reclaim their life. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.